Um, but uh, just to, to kick off the things on the show today, I'd like to um, return to a bit of local news. And by local, I mean here in the uh, hottest, classiest, classiest, toughest city in the world, New York City. And uh, this story comes to us courtesy of Staten Island. And I would like to check in now on um, a certain event and, uh, you know, individual who I'm, again, firmly convinced the show has willed into being. And that, of course, is the QAnon-obsessed weirdo who ended up killing one of the heads of the New York Five families in Staten Island. And wouldn't you know it, um, now that uh, it's sort of gone to trial, we are beginning to uh, peer behind the curtain of just what inspired such an event to take place. And, you know, take it with a grain of salt because this does come courtesy of his defense lawyer. But it is a pretty amazing story, straight out of the Chapo mindset, nonetheless. So this comes courtesy of the New York Times. Uh, Headline, he wasn't seeking to kill a mob boss. He was trying to help Trump, his lawyer says. In new court documents, the lawyer for Anthony Camello says he became obsessed by far-right QAnon conspiracy theories. So it says here, court documents filed on Friday offered a glimpse into the deeply troubled mind of Mr. Camello, who his defense lawyer says was so deluded by internet conspiracy theories that he was determined to conduct a citizen's arrest of Mr. Cali and turn the mafia leader over to the military. Now, this is, of course, uh, Francisco Frankie Boy Cali, who is the reputed leader of the Gambino crime family. And uh, Mr. Camello described here as an aimless young man who lived with his parents on Staten Island. That's... Everyone who lives in Staten Island. Going on here says he ardently believed that Frances- Francesco Cali, a boss in the Gambito crime family, was a prominent member of the deep state and accordingly an appropriate target for a citizen's arrest, wrote Mr. Camillo's lawyer, Robert C. Gottlieb. So I love the idea of trying to put a member of the Gambino crime family under citizen's arrest, not for being in the mafia, but for being in the deep state. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, that. I mean, if people forget, like one of the biggest storylines in season one of The Sopranos was when uh, Christopher, well, Multisante and uh, Brandon Falone stole Junior's truck full of adrenochrome. <laughs> <laughs> um, going on here, it says, Mr. Cowley's murder was the highest profile mob killing in decades, an event so significant that in the days between Mr. Cowley's death and Mr. Camello's arrest, speculations had surged that a new war was brewing among the New York's five mafia families. Now, for those of you who uh, don't remember, the five mafia families are Brooklyn, <laughs> Queens, <laughs> Manhattan, <laughs> Staten Island, the Bronx. You put them all five together, you got the hottest, coldest city in the world. <laughs> That's New York, baby. But um, it says here, the reality, according to his lawyer, appears to be even more bizarre. Mr. Camello had become convinced that Mr. Cowley was part of the so-called deep state, a cabal of criminals that conspiracy theorists claim controlled the United States government. Mr. Camello also believed that he was a chosen vigilante of President Trump. Mr. Camello became certain that he was enjoying the protection of President Trump himself and that he had the president's full support, Mr. Gottlieb wrote. Now... You know, uh, I guess the theme for today's show would be um, a little bit of knowledge and truth is a dangerous thing um, mm-hmm. in the hands and minds of an idiot. And I like that the um, the sort of mafia deep state connection thing, because like, I guess there's a grain. I mean, the mafia has collaborated with U.S. intelligence and law enforcement before. Oh, Operation Gladio. Like, Not uh, kidding. P2 Masonic Lodge. Uh, the, the pizza connection. Uh, well, the French connection. <laughs> I can't, no, these are real these things. These are all the real, mob, yeah. Yes, yeah. The, the mob helped uh, keep the communists out of power in Italy after uh, World War II. Uh, specifically in America, though, in New York, it was Lucky Luciano, the, the famous deal to like keep the, the New York ports safe from Nazi U-boats, yep. which was really the cover story, to, which meant keep them safe from any kind of union agitation or left-wing organizing. Yeah, the same guys who broke the strikes in Marseille in France after World War II again were the guys who did the French Connection uh, heroin dealing. This is just sort of the theme of our era. Like, all of this stuff is real. Everyone just gets, like, the details completely wrong. Like... Pizzagate's definitely real. It's just not in comic ping pong. 
Right. This is my favorite part of the story here. It says, um, Mr. Camello took handcuffs with him to Todd Hill on, on March 13th. Mr. Gottlieb said, but his plan was foiled when Mr. Cowley refused to submit to a citizen's arrest. <laughs> I just well, I did not plan for this, I got to tell you. Uh, just to be frank, no like I, I thought that you, the mob boss, would take my authority as a guy wearing sweatpants uh, to come with me to the military police office. Oh, this fucking guy's asking for a letter of Mark. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, yeah. Uh, um, uh, Mr. Cowley was completely stitched up when um, uh, he noticed that uh, there was an admiralty flag hanging outside his house. <laughs> but it says here, uh, instead, Mr. Gottlieb said, the Gambino leader reached toward his waistband. Fearing for his life, Mr. Camello shot Mr. Cowley ten times and fled. QAnon, a baseless conspiracy theory. By the way, that's a uh, needless All editorializing right. yeah, by the is, New York Times. Yeah, this is biased reporting. <laughs> that originated on internet message board, played a key role in Mr. Camello's descent into mental instability, his lawyer said. That's more, more editorializing. Yeah. It claims, among other things, that America is controlled by a deep state, that prominent Democratic politicians are pedophiles. I mean, it yeah. claims that. <laughs> Uh, Those parts. And that John F. Kennedy Jr., who died in a 1999 plane crash, is secretly alive and will run for president in 2020. Okay, well, two out of three. I don't know. I mean, Matt, someone showed us they did the face app of John F. Kennedy Jr., and, dude, it's real. Yeah, it looks just like Vincent Fuchsia. So it goes, uh, driven by that obsession, Mr. Gottlieb said, Mr. Camello began early this year to attempt citizens' arrests of people he believed to be associated with the deep state. In February, Mr. Cabello twice tried to conduct his own arrest of Mayor Bill de Blasio, including one instance in which he showed up at Gracie Mansion, the mayoral home in Manhattan. Not long after that incident, Mr. Camello sought the help of United States Marshals at Federal District Court in Manhattan and asked them to help him arrest two California Democrats, Representatives Maxine Waters and Adam Schiff, both of whom he believed were in the vicinity. He was rebuffed. This is the best never made episode of Justified that I have right. yet encountered. Just, uh, you know, Mr. Camello approaching Raylan Givens <laughs> and asking him to arrest Maxine Waters. Yeah. I love that. Raylan Givens, uh, like Maxine Waters, is holding a baby and squeezing it like a free son. <laughs> <laughs> and Raylan is like, now down in the holler, some, some of the folks make their own adrenochrome. <laughs> they think it makes them faster, but I guarantee you I will put this bullet through your head. Before I'm you take one more sip of that baby. <laughs> I'm imagining uh, Raylan finding out that his uh, shitbag father was involved in the adrenochrome trade. He's like, <laughs> yeah. We're not, not. He's like, Raylan, that's just what we did back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes here. Uh, Mr. Gottlieb identified once one of Mr. Camello's accounts. Real America's voice underscore on Instagram in his filing. The page has dozens of memes and written screeds. Some are difficult to decipher. I mean, yeah, if you don't take the fucking time to read the proofs and understand it, uh, including uh, several posted days before Mr. Cowley's death. One post accuses Speaker Nancy Pelosi, Democrat of California, of being a fascist. Patriot sleeper cells are awake, he wrote in another. Yet another refers to Bill and Hillary Clinton as the Clinton crime family. But Mr. Gottlieb said he believed Mr. Camello had encountered posts online that suggested that mafia figures like Mr. Cowley were connected to the deep state. Mr. Gottlieb said on Saturday that he was sifting through thousands and thousands of messages and posts and forums that said Mr. Camello, he said Mr. Camello might have engaged with. So this is a, um, a bold uh, posting defense by defense attorney Mr. Gottlieb. Just a bit of an update on, you know, the head of one of New York City's five families uh, murdered uh, by someone who believed he was putting him under citizen's arrest at the personal behest of Donald Trump. So, well, Not how he thought he was going to go, I can guess. I, my, the best part is that he thought, like, imagine looking at Donald Trump and being like, this guy's got my back. The thing is, like, I feel bad for this guy because he's going to get a really bad sentence because he's going to get a hate crime modification on his conviction. Uh, for doing tropes by saying that the mob boss was a reptilian, <laughs> making it an anti-Semitic hate crime. I, I like the how his ambitions just sort of shrank. At first, he's like, I'm going to personally arrest the mayor. <laughs> yeah. Then I'm going to, I guess, get a couple of U.S. Marshals to help me go across the country to arrest some California congressmen. 
And then when he realizes that that's out of his purview, he's like, well, there's a guy down the block who's kind of <laughs> yeah, involved yeah, yeah. in some shit. I'll just go arrest him. I don't yeah, have to go. Over, so, I don't have to pay for the toll to go over the bridge. <laughs> it's so it's so Staten Island guy, just like yeah. It turns out I actually live next door to uh, one of the international immortal pedophiles. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Staten Island is the best borough in the world because you know you can uh, you can meet a immortal a immortal uh, ne- uh, fallen angel uh, <laughs> from the forbidden ninth planet Nibiru, and uh, he's actually just another fat Italian guy who looks just <laughs> like you. You don't have to go anywhere. Most convenient borough in the world, and you get to drink on the ferry. <laughs> we got the best pizza. We got the best pedophiles, baby. Number one, Staten Island. <laughs> Did I think I ever tell you guys my Staten Island ferry story? No. Yeah, what is it? No. I just like it's not even really a story. It's like me and Nick just decided to, you know, because it's like a nice like ride, uh, you know, and it was like a late shift thing. So like a bunch of, you know, guys in like work suits were in there. And uh, one guy, he pulls out like a plastic, plastic uh, bag and he sets it on his lap. And then he pulls out uh, one of those like one quart Ziploc bags and it's full of pasta and red sauce. <laughs> And he just eating it out of the bag. <laughs> I mean, better, better, better to do that on a ferry than, let's say, like on a closed subway car or airplane. You know? I guess, it's but that- it's not like it's a smooth ride. Half the time, that ferry runs into a wall <laughs> in the water. <laughs> uh, Matt, as our resident Q watcher, this one's for you. Uh, I've never heard of the Gambinos or Mafia at all related to Q, other than this particular guy. Is no, it, is I, it I, just I, something neither. a total invention it's totally of this? Crazy. I mean, I think that there. If you go into it, I'm sure. I mean, there's a million posts. That there's only a few of them are actually Q. The rest of them are people like commenting on them. You know, like medieval scribes or something. <laughs> but I think people just sort of riff, and people riff on what's close to them. So if you're a Q guy in Staten Island, it's like, hey, you know, the guy Maybe down the, the block, he's, he's got to be involved. Yeah, I, I assume it's at this point like a kind of thing where I could just pull any name that more than 10 people would know. I like, I don't know, like Nick Jonas and go in there and be like, oh, yeah, Nick Jonas is totally involved in Q somewhere deep in the forum post. Oh, yeah. And like, I'm sure that Nick Jonas is a white hat. <laughs> I'm sure that if you go to any town in this country of, of, of a large enough size, like some local, like, like the guy who does the commercials for like discount electronics there's people who've decided that he's involved in Q because they see him on TV all the time. We should protect Bob from Bob's furniture. <laughs> I mean, he's got to be next. Where are we more? Where are we again? <laughs> I think, um, I mean, like, but this just, like, it just goes to show that, like, you know, the sort of, like, n- nature of psychotic delusion isn't to be divined very, uh, like, literally. Like, basically, when you get sort of that stream of crazy, you just get a very sticky brain and things just stick to it. It's like a ball of tape rolling around on the ground, just picking up whatever's in the vicinity. Uh, once again, I'm going to have to disagree with you, Amber, and say that the nature of psychotic delusion is to be studied intensely and shared. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully by We're gonna a, read them tea by leaves. a podcasting uh, medium. No, I like the idea of uh, Bob from Bob's Furniture. He's a black hat. Absolutely. Going after him on the case is the general from the auto insurance general. <laughs> and she killed the beautiful, handsome auto insurance general is a white hat who's taking down Bob from Bob's Furniture and Crazy Eddie. My prices are so low, you'll think I'm a pedophile! <laughs> and the most, uh, you know, internationally connected, high power, you know, fixer type lawyers for the pedophiles, uh, Salino and Barnes. 